So, the other day I was re-watching the Guardians of the Galaxy movie, the first one, and I kind of realized something. The Guardians of the Galaxy are a D&D &D party. Yeah, those Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, I'm a pretty big comic book nerd, and over the past couple years when I got into D&D, &D, it's pretty quickly become, well, possibly my favorite thing in general, alongside of like Star Wars and Pokemon, which have been my favorite things since as far as I can remember. So maybe I'm just kind of reaching here, but I don't think so. Because not only did I realize that they are a D&D &D party, I was actually able to decide exactly which class each of the Guardians are. I'm Tiny, and let's talk. A bit of a disclaimer before we start, uh, I'm gonna be basing this 90% off of the first movie. I really like the second movie, and don't get me wrong, characters like Yondu and Mantis and Nebula, they deserve to be on this list, but the original group is much more of a D&D party vibe. If you want, I can still pretty easily give you a class for each of those three, but I'm going to be mainly sticking with the original cast for now. So I'm going to start this list off with the character that made me really realize that this was a thing, and that's Drax the Destroyer. So there I was, sitting there watching the movie, right, having a grand old time, and then I realized something. Huh. Drax is just a barbarian, huh? And the more I thought of it, the more I realized, yeah, he's like, really just a barbarian. He doesn't wear any armor because he's got unarmored defense, he frenzies, he goes into a rage, he makes reckless attacks constantly, and then I started thinking more, and I was like, I can actually decide which subclass he is too. And I was like, oh my god, he's just a berserker. Think of it, he goes into a frenzied rage and leaves himself open to attacks and finds himself exhausted by the end of it. He goes into a mindless rage when he tries to attack the entirety of Ronan's army, and when he's first introduced, he's literally just intimidating other prisoners. Intimidating presence. Like, the more I was thinking about it, the more clear it was, and I was like, oh my god, that's crazy. And the more I kept thinking about it, I started realizing, wait, he's not the only one, there's... the rest of them are too. Um, also, can we just mention that he's just a green palette swap of Grog from Critical Role? Like, obviously I know Drax is, like, a character that's been around for a little while, but, like, they're both barbarians, same subclass and everything, both bald, both tattoos all over their body, I can't be the only one that sees it. Both of them have an int of six. Like, come on. The next character I wanted to talk about is Rocket Raccoon. Um, because Rocket is obviously, he's an artificer. Artificer? Artificer. I think it's Artificer, but that's really annoying to say. So I'm going to say Artificer. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. Anyway, he's like, he's a little gremlin who has basically no physical strength, right? But he's constantly experimenting and making new gizmos and gadgets to make bigger and bigger things go boom. I'm going to be honest here and say that I'm not super familiar or really even super fond of the Artificer. I know, like, in a certain setting, it's really fitting and it can be fun and there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with it, but it just feels out of place a lot of the time, so I really am not super fond of it. However, if I were going to pick a subclass for him, I would probably say Artillerist, because Rocket really likes making guns and cannons that go boom. So, Gamora is a fighter. She could also be a rogue, because I think she was one of Thanos' assassins, but fighter just makes so much more sense to me. Um, like a fighter, she's incredibly efficient at fighting and combat, but to be honest, she's a little boring. Don't get me wrong, I still love her, she's essential to the party, but on her own, she has by far the least standout personality of the group and tends to be very one-note outside of her interactions with the other members of the group directly. You know, kind of like a fighter. But what subclass is she? Honestly, this was probably the hardest one to figure out because a lot of the flavors of fighter are just fighter, but with blank for their abilities, right? Like they're all kind of the same in a lot of ways. I'm generalizing, please don't hate me. I, I actually really like fighter. It's just, it is what it is. Um, but I thought about it a lot. And if I had to pick just one, 
I think I'd go with Champion. And I think the subclass abilities kind of explain why. Uh, she's a remarkable athlete. We see her lifting incredibly heavy things, jumping incredibly high, running really fast, all those things. But also, Survivor. Because we learn in these movies that Thanos made Gamora and Nebula fight each other constantly as a test, and Gamora always won. And she always survived under Thanos' tyranny. She was his favorite child for a reason. Groot is another one that came really obvious to me because Groot's a druid. Duh. <laughs> like, like he's a giant, really strong walking tree. But like, not only is he just like a big, strong tree, right? Like the things that make him a druid are very druid. Groot is fucking impossible to kill. And if you've ever played D&D &D, or if you've ever been a DM, you know that druids do not die. They just don't, ever. For the subclass, I decided he's probably a Circle of Spores druid because he doesn't really focus on shape change, but also he actually literally does things with spores in the movie. Like when he does the thing where he creates lights for them out of actual seed spores on his body. Druid was so obvious that I actually tried to come up with something else to make it a little more interesting. And I think you could classify him as an Oath of the Ancients Paladin, and that'd be all right, because he's very protective, he's very supportive, um, he still has the strong nature theme, obviously, um, and he's also very physically strong. However, I just think Druid makes too much sense that if you picked anything else that, like, it just felt wrong. Okay, so last but not least, is the one that I actually had the most fun with by far. And this is the one that, for me, tied it all together. And that is Peter Quill, AKA Star-Lord. Just wanna say, this one was by far the hardest, but it wasn't because he doesn't fit any of the classes, it was because he kind of fits into a lot of them. Like, with his past growing up with Yondu and being a Ravager, he could be a rogue pretty easily, right? Or if you look into the second movie, uh, he gains a lot of his light-based power from Ego, so you could say like, oh, he's a warlock, or maybe even uh, a cleric of some kind. But, I thought about it a lot, and there was one answer that kept coming back to me, and at first I was like, no, it doesn't make sense. But the more I thought of it, the more I was like, no, this is the only one that really makes sense. And that's Bard. So, he would still have the outlaw background growing up with Yondu, however, Bard just makes too much sense. Think about it, okay? He's obsessed with his name becoming famous and being known around the galaxy. Star-Lord. Who? Star-Lord, man. He has powers that he can't quite explain. He loves music. It's like a huge theme of the movie. On top of that, he's capable of holding his own in a fight, but his first choice is very, very rarely to actually outmuscle whoever he's fighting. It's almost always either outthink them or trick them or come up with some sort of strategy to get away and then there's also like the little things like every bard is is always flirting with npcs and other players and stuff right we meet him having a girl who he forgot in his ship as he's robbing a temple like he's so much of a bard it just makes so much sense to me anyway uh those are my thoughts let me know what you think let me know if I'm right or wrong. I know I'm right. I put weeks, if not days, if not hours, if not minutes of thought into this, so I know I'm correct. Um, also, for this video series, I kind of want it to be just kind of like a whatever I wanted it to be type of thing, where it could be more scripted, or it could just be me talking off the top of my head, kind of like this one is. Let me know if you like it. I do kind of want to do more of this in the future, because I think I can do a lot with it and have like a lot of different styles and topics I can cover. This was just something I wanted to try for fun. Anyway, I hope you have a great day, and I will see you next time.